Hello, my name is uh, Apo Jabarian. Uh, I'm the host of USA Armenian Live TV. Uh, I am in conversation from Yerevan, the capital of Armenia, with our guest, Mehran Kalajan, who's an expert on Armenian affairs. He's a Jerusalem-born uh, Armenian, uh, and uh, he has uh, deep knowledge of the inner workings of the Armenian patriarchy. Those of us who have not been able to follow the recent developments, uh, in the last few years, there has been a major upheaval in the Armenian quarter, the Armenian quarter that has been uh, enhanced by Armenian presence since over 2000 years and has received succeeding rulers blessings for uninterrupted Armenian existence and presence in the Holy Land, starting from uh, Muhammad, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, uh, all the way to Saladin, all the way to the Crusaders, and all the way till today. And the uh, recent upheaval was uh, upgraded uh, with the emergence of critical details on how the Patriarch of Jerusalem, Archbishop Nuran Manugian, turned out to be a, a not so good leader, a spiritual leader, uh, so, the details of our conversations will be discussed by Mr. Miran Kalaja. And I would like to ask him to give our viewers uh, a short uh, uh, preview of what has transpired so that everybody is in context and we can move forward. Good evening, Apo. Uh, first of all, I would like to express many thanks and gratitude to AMG and to you for your efforts to expose the shameful position of the Armenian Patriarch in Jerusalem, a situation that no Armenian or non-Armenian person shares. Today, the Armenians of Jerusalem are angry and devastated, a community with young generation, fresh blood, cushing in those centuries old veins, demand answers, accountability, and transparency from people entrusted to safeguard centuries old privilege and failed to do so. As you mentioned, the Armenian presence in Jerusalem stretches back to 90 BC, but the establishment of the quarter occurred after the nation of Armenian declared Christianity its national religion in 301. Um, and also, uh, the the appropriated land sale in Armenian quarter will damage the Christian presence in Jerusalem. A large portion of the Armenian quarter in Jerusalem's old city has been sold to a Jewish developer in a move that could erase the centuries old Armenian presence in the city and further squeeze the Christian minority in Israel. But this didn't stop only selling the, the land in front of the Armenian quarter, Goveru Baldes, but there are also some Armenian families' houses are included in this master transaction that has been put by the Archbishop uh, Nurhan Manukian and the former real estate Khachiki Ratian, who was the director of the Patrick's real estate department. This has been going since 2021, when the former real estate Khachiki Ratian, then the director of the Patrick, said that the Patrick of Jerusalem has indeed leased the land to Danny Rubinstein, a Jewish businessman from Australia from 98 years and that Rubinstein intended to build a luxury hotel on the property and as well a Jewish Chabad. But this didn't end there. It all started because the Armenian families faced a deportation from their own houses. Last week, the King Hashemite as well, the Palestinian state 
have froze the recognition to the Armenian Patriarchate. This is a very significant because when we have any Patriarchate in Jerusalem has been elected, they need to get the of the King Hashemite of Jordan and the Palestinian state. And this is going to give the entity power to the Armenian community in Jerusalem to take legal and as well to gain the power to ask for re-election in, in Jerusalem. Uh, Mr. Kalajian, uh, uh, many, many members of the diaspora community are up at arms uh, with what's going on. And uh, many members uh, uh, are asking how come uh, the uh, rights of vote of the uh, lay people that used to be able to participate in the elections of the patriarch and uh, administrative level or real estate level, uh, lay people used to have rights to vote. Uh, but in 1928, according to uh, some sources, uh, the British government has forced on the patriarchate to discontinue with democracy and uh, uh, consolidate uh, the ruling power in the hands of just a few people. Uh, and now many, many diaspora Armenians as uh, an integral part of the Armenian nation are demanding that the Armenian nation decide the fate of the Armenian patriarchate. What is your uh, take on that? Very different from every other Armenian diaspora uh, church's existence. The Armenian community of Jerusalem has the right to vote and to block the General Assembly decision that was made in Jerusalem, and as well the Armenian community and the Armenian political parties, they have the right to be engaged in the process of the vote and also the replacement of the Armenian Patriarchate. This happened many years ago when one of the patriarchates was actually deported from Jerusalem, and it was the decision of the community. I, today, through this program, appeal to the Armenians in diaspora to come together to fight to the right of our Armenian presence of Jerusalem. 1,700 years we own the land of in Jerusalem, and this land has gone, but it is reversible, and the Armenian community of Jerusalem can gain back the rights, but we need to get together, we need to work together, and I ask for all our advocates and the legal experts to build an alliance and to visit Jerusalem and to open the negotiation on the government level as well through the legal level as well. Uh, many members in the uh, Armenian diaspora and Armenia proper and Artsakh Republic are following closely and with much anxiety the developments pertaining the Armenian presence in general and more specifically the real estate uh, properties controlled by the Armenian Patriarchate in the historic Armenian quarter of Jerusalem. Uh, it's very encouraging to see the Armenian youth in Jerusalem uh, be becoming very active on this issue. And uh, I'd like to share some of the photographs uh, that the USA Armenian Life editorial team has received uh, from uh, uh, Jerusalem on uh, the protest rallies that are ongoing. Uh, so let's watch uh, some of the photographs. Let's uh, look at the uh, uh, one photograph where we see Armenian youth uh, holding a protest rally. And uh, in the second photograph, we, we can look at the, the general view of uh, Jerusalem. And, uh, and in the next uh, photograph image, we see the a map of the old uh, city uh, of Jerusalem where we see clearly the Armenian quarter 
uh, the Muslim quarter, the Christian quarter, and the Jewish quarter. And in the next photograph, we see uh, the old city park, uh, where uh, next to it we see another map. Uh, uh, it illustrates the Govern Bardes, uh, which is the cow's garden, which has become the center of uh, the scandal and uh, protest throughout the world, throughout the Armenian world. And in the next photograph, we see uh, two individuals. On the left is the Patriarch of Jerusalem, Archbishop Nurhan, and on the right, we see, uh, according to Patriarch, now former uh, uh, very reverend Baret Yeretsian, who is now declared a layperson under his birth name, Hachik Yeretsian. Uh, and I hope we can uh, uh, bring him on TV and invite you, Mr. Kalajan, and have a three-way conversation in the, in the near future, if, if that's possible. Uh, and then in the next photograph, we see the historic Armenian uh, quarter entrance, or one of the sections. Uh, and, uh, and most importantly, uh, in the next image, we see uh, the King of Jordan, His Royal Highness uh, Abdullah II, and the President of the State of Palestine, Nas uh, Palestine Palestinian National Authority, President, uh, His Excellency Mahmoud Abbas, and we see in the center the highly controversial patriarch, Archbishop Nurhan Manubia. So, going back to our conversation, uh, what clear options does the Armenian nation have? By the Armenian nation, let me specify that the Armenian nation consists of Armenians in Armenia and Artsakh, and Armenians in the Armenian diaspora. That's the Armenian nation. And the overwhelming, the landslide majority of the Armenian nation feels strongly that anything Armenian belongs to the Armenian nation. So not, not one individual in organizational leadership position has the right to declare that they are autonomous and they can do whatever they want with their assets, including real estate and uh, uh, faith-based or religious-based organization. So now the time has come to put a stop to unmitigated disaster in the form of unchecked abuse by people in leadership position. Mr. Kalaja. You are right, you know, the Armenian Patriarch of Jerusalem, Nurhan, rejects telling what he gave away. And that is a question that today the new generation, the young generation, has been energized to ask what he gave away. He has no right to give those lands. Those lands belong to the people of the Armenians who they live there. How do you feel when someone is targeting your house and asking you to leave your land of 100 years. This deal is not only about only about Goverum Bardes. This is also about some properties that belongs to the Armenian residents in Jerusalem. It also impacted other business uh, uh, Armenians owners. They changed the rule. They make it more difficult so they can take them out from their rights. There are rules in the state of Israel, and those rules is in favor of the Armenian people in Jerusalem. That's why they should not stop their revolution, and they must move, demanding the resignation of the Armenian Patriarchate. But one more thing, this is the second week that the Armenian community are coming together and they're making a demonstration in the in the in the in the Armenian quarter. 
the Armenian Patriarchal Office of Jerusalem, they tried to make a statement and f forbidding for the Armenians to raise their voices to do uh, those those uh, those demonstrations and protest. But that it doesn't go that way. The Armenians of Jerusalem has the right and the protection to, through the Islamic time and through also the British time. I am confident by this efforts and by appeal to everyone, the Armenian Jerusalem will exist and the land must be reversed and the truth shall be spoken to everyone. Now, going back to the image uh, where we saw uh, His Royal Highness uh, uh, King of Jordan, uh, Abdullah II, and the President of the Palestinian Authority, Mr. Mahmoud Abbas, uh, to the credit of the Palestinian and Jordanian leadership, they have taken a righteous position uh, in an effort, in a humanitarian effort, to help the Armenian nation continue its presence in the old city and, uh, and all of the Holy Land. Now, it is hopeful that the government of Israel will join Palestine and Jordan to uh, help the Armenian nation punish, hold accountable the culprits, hold accountable the corrupt and nepotistic so-called leaders of the Armenian Patriarchate and help the Armenian nation continue their journey in the Holy Land. So, Mr. Rapo, it is a very important and a vital step by the King Jordan of Hajjumite that had a very severe concern when they were rejected to have an open conversation with the Armenian Patriarchate. And uh, that's one. Two, the Palestinian Authority and the Palestinian leadership and their presence in Jerusalem tried their efforts to open for a dialogue and they were turned down. As well, the Israeli presence in Jerusalem, they also have severe concerns about the recent changes in the Armenian quarter. They would not be in favor of this, this changes that is going to happen. From political perspective, this will have a negative impact between the Israelis and the Palestinian process for the future of Jerusalem. And the Israelis must and will implement the United Nations resolutions 242 and 338, and Jerusalem, since there are the three monotheistic religions, will be an open and international for all. That's why Israel is watching with concern about the recent, uh, uh, the recent uh, shameful incident in Jerusalem. Well, that, that's remarkable and that's highly appreciative. Um, and we look forward to see the three uh, main authorities in charge of the Armenian presence in the Holy Lands, uh, Jordan, Palestine, and Israel. In this case, join hands and uh, help the Armenian nation recover uh, the uh, Goverumbardes, the cow's garden, and any other real estate assets that have been secretly uh, negotiated away from uh, the jurisdiction of the Armenian Patriarchate. What belongs to the Armenian nation must be returned to the Armenian nation. And we thank uh, the three main authorities that we recognize as the guardians of the integrity of the Holy Lands and more specifically Jerusalem and the Old City in Jerusalem. Certainly. I know that there uh, is continuous efforts from the Vatican and the Vatican has been involved on a very high level with the State of Israel and their foreign department. Uh, and as well with their cultural attaché uh, in the mayor of uh, Jerusalem office. And they, they are opening now a dialogue to find out the, the more information about this tragedy, about how they have signed on a document giving up our rights 
and this will come to an end. Uh, the Armenian community is not going to stop the fight. There would be a white revolution, and this white revolution will have an end and a change in the leadership of the St. James Brotherhood. Uh, for our Armenian and non-Armenian friends around the world who may not be aware of uh, a great, beautiful trend right now, as we're speaking, taking, uh, gaining further momentum, is the worldwide Armenian uprising against intra-Armenian corruption and ne uh, nepotism, uh, starting from uh, uh, the Armenian church in general and all the uh, community-based organizations and of course the twin Armenian republics and I must acknowledge the fact that right now to the credit of the new generation we have a golden new generation in Armenia and Artsakh, the twin Armenian republics and in the diaspora. So now uh, as uh, Mr. Kalajan has underlined uh, the time has come that we put an end collectively to corruption and nepotism in the faith-based and community-based organizations in the diaspora and also uh, all over uh, the Armenian uh, nation. Yeah. Uh, I agree with you, Apujan. Indeed, uh, this, uh, the new generation is doing everything they can with every possible opportunities they have in order to fight back. Um, the Armenian churches, the diaspora advocates, experts, they all must create an alliance and they must visit to Jerusalem and open a dialogue on a government level. This is a legal appeal in order to reverse our lands back. I appall today our Armenian young generation in Jerusalem. I have no words, but when I saw them today, that they are raising their voice, and their voice is stronger than anyone, I had tears, and I had to say I commend them. Uh, in, in, a, in a spirit of taking a practical step, many uh, members of the Armenian nation feel strongly that uh, the current uh, patriarch, uh, so-called Archbishop Nurhan Manugyan, should be immediately removed from a leadership position uh, in the spirit of the declaration by the Palestinian and Jordanian uh, authorities that they have declined to recognize him as the patriarch. Uh, so uh, now uh, it is hopeful that the Israeli government joins them and respects the will of the Armenian nation in uh, uh, facilitating his swift removal and let the people, let the Armenian people in the Armenian quarter of Jerusalem decide who, who will be the next patriarch, although the current bylaws disallows that, but the bylaws has been uh, hijacked back in 1928. Right. It has to be reinstated and we must re-empower the Armenian nation to elect their, ne their next patriarch, Mr. Kalajan, based on the current bylaws, how many people are entitled to elect the, ne the next patriarch? So this is, uh, the St. James Brotherhood is made of every uh, priest that is a member of the St. James Brotherhood. Uh, we have members in Jerusalem, and we have also members in diaspora. However, uh, there, ha there are also a charter law uh, that it allows the Armenian political parties in Jerusalem to ask for a voice in order to be included in that election. Uh, there are right now an alliance in Jerusalem. They are trying to meet with the, with an, uh, with the Armenian patriarchate, which he refused because his rejection and because he's not talking about what he sold, they are continuing to find the legal, practical way to remove him. The first step when the Jordanian Hashemite and Palestine 
stop the recognition that is actually a very important and a critical step by those two governments those two governments are telling to the armenian community members of jerusalem you have the right to fight back you have the right to get enough signatures in order to remove the armenian patriarchate and that is the next step to my knowledge there are an increasing number of Armenian youth throughout the Armenian nation, including the twin Armenian republics and the diaspora, right. that are up at arms, and uh, they are insisting on holding Patriarch Nura Manukyan personally accountable, as well as any other corrupt members of the clergy that have uh, been involved in, in the recent nefarious activities. So uh, now that Palestine and Jordan have seized uh, and have dis uh, decided not to recognize Nurhan Manukyan as the patriarch, uh, it is hopeful that the Israeli government not block uh, the rights of the uh, civilian members of the Armenian community in Jerusalem to physically remove and depose the patriarch because uh, number one he has refused to hold any kind of dialogue in other words my way or the highway so I may, maybe we should put him on the highway physically send them out depose them and uh, make sure that the next elections are held in a spirit of brotherhood uh, harmony and uh, unity and also uh, uh, with the uh, with the high ideal of recouping the lost real estate properties and revert it back to the control of the Armenian patriarchate in Jerusalem. Yeah, and upper the Israeli government has no right to break the old rules during the Turkish mandate and the English mandate. The Armenian community has a protection. And because of the protection and the status quo, they will fight to the end. Uh, the only area that the Israeli government can interfere is sending their police to the Armenian quarter. And that will, could create a second revolution between the youth and also the police itself. When, when the former director of real estate ran away uh, from Jerusalem without Give, facing the truth and sharing the information, they did reach out to the police. The, the police came to the Armenian quarter, they blocked the youth, and it was a tragedy and it was a very painful incident. Uh, well, uh, uh, it is hopeful that the police this time around does not block the right of the Armenian youth to physically remove this highly corrupted and nepotistic Patriarch, uh, as for me personally, he's no longer the patriarch. I agree with His Royal Highness Abdullah II of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, and I agree with Mr. Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the Palestinian Authority, that he is no longer the patriarch. He should be removed physically and he must be deposed so that we can pave the way for uh, healing, and uh, reunification of the Armenian community in uh, Jerusalem and the reintegration of the Jerusalem Armenians with the rest of the Armenian nation around the world. Yes, because uh, Jerusalem uh, is not Jerusalem, a major city, and it is very significant for all the religious. And Israel must be very careful with his next steps. Israel must support the right protocol and not interfering in the Armenian Patriarchate. This is an internal issue, and the issue must be solved by the Armenians in Jerusalem and the diaspora. And I see that the interference of Jordan and the Palestinian state is actually a boost uh, to, the, to the young youth generation in Jerusalem, as well to the Armenian communities, to supporting them. I am confident there would be very major and serious developments coming 
within a week or so? Uh, you know, based on the uh, religious freedom and the separation of church and state, uh, Palestine and Jordan have proven that they uphold the right of uh, keeping the church uh, and the state separate. Right. Uh, and uh, they respect the right of uh, the Armenian Apostolic uh, uh, Christian uh, members of the Armenian Apostolic Church, the civilian members and the religious uh, clergy members right. have the right to do whatever they feel it's the wisest thing to do for their religious establishment. Right. And it is hopeful that Israel will follow suit and uh, uh, uphold the principle of religious freedom and the separation of church and the state. In other words, not allow corrupt members of the clergy or lay people in leadership position to misuse the Israeli police against the people. Right. It should be the opposite. The right. Israeli police should serve the people, not the corrupt leadership of the Armenian Patriarchate of Jerusalem. Correct. And, uh, you know, Israel is very much concerned uh, and they are also terrorized by this act by, by, by uh, two individuals who damaged the presence of the Armenians in Jerusalem, erasing them. It is time not only to uphold them responsible, but it is time to come on a general assembly meeting for the Armenian community of Jerusalem, which it allows them to do so, and to take the right action by denouncing the Armenian patriarchate and moving forward for a new election. Uh, this is an ongoing crisis. It's a major national scandal for the Armenian people everywhere. Uh, it is hopeful that we can continue this conversation, Mr. Kalajan. I want to thank you for joining USA Armenian Life TV on AMGA. Uh, and I join you in thanking the management of Armenian Media Group of America for uh, uh, helping USA Armenian Life TV to hold this most important and timely televised conversation with Mr. Miran Kalajan, an expert on Armenian affairs in Jerusalem. Thank you. I would like to thank you all, and I would like also to thank the network for bringing this shameful uh, 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 picture uh, and uh, making sure that everyone understand what is happening in Jerusalem. Indeed, this is a continued conversation. I would like to appreciate all your efforts and thank you again. Thank you.